Hello and welcome back to the Common Lisp tutorial series we're doing. A uh, bit of a detour again this week. I actually want to revisit what we talked about last week with the idea of an object system. I had a bit of a revelation after I uploaded that video and realized that the rules for making a generalized object system were not much more complicated than that of a specialized object system and I want to drill into what that means. It's still functional programming, we're still going to be looking at functions and lambdas because at the end of the day that is fundamental to how the system works, the idea of uh, functions and closures, the, this is how it can be done. So I still believe this falls within the functional programming stuff that we were looking at. Uh, but this is not a, a video I was necessarily intend. I had planned. I just think it's kind of fallen out of some of the things I've been doing. So let's just start. Um, we are we're going to build a general object system. It's going to be a single inheritance system. It's going to support uh, properties and methods, and like Python, uh, there is going to be no private members, uh, everything's going to be a convention, and I'm just going to kind of be cherry picking bits and pieces from different object systems, so like JavaScript's going to be single inherited, single inheritance, Python no private data, um, and whatever else that gets thrown into the mix gets thrown into the mix. There's nothing that I, I don't believe I've come up with anything particularly original, I'm just combining different ideas in a new way. So, with nothing more ado, uh, I am going to restart my uh, interpreter, just because I want to make sure that it's clear. And we're going to say build. Yeah, that works. So, very first iterative um, Start. We're going to just create build. I'm going to pass in name. Pass in my name. I'm going to pass in the age sum at work said I was. And we're just going to uh, print that out. So format nil. We're just going to say obj one. There we go. So we're going to save that and hopefully build is undefined. Yes, because I have to compile it in there. So we will retry that. Invalid number of arguments. Uh, yes, because that needs to be rest props. That's the only thing missing there. So let's restart that. And there we go. We have what are function is returning. It's just we're giving it a, a p list, a property list, and it's giving it back to us. So that's the the way this is going to work. Now, as we saw last week, the key to capturing scope was building a closure, and we do that by using lambdas. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to say lambda, and this takes a prop and it can optionally take some other arguments as well. So we're going to say setter nil val nil. And again, we're just going to return props here, but it's going to be a function. This build returns a function which returns the properties. So what we need to say here is we need to say apply to object one we're just going to pass in uh, that. Like It doesn't matter what the prop is right now, it's just ignored. We're going to get some warnings when we compile this. Um, actually, I'm going to split my screen this way so you can see the uh, REPL on the right. There we go. So when I compile this, we're, yeah, we've got warnings about it's not being used. That's fine. Um, we will be using them in a moment. So when we run this now, we apply 
to the function that has been stored in obj1, a value of one. It's not we're not doing anything with it yet, but this is the the way we need to go about doing things, just using apply to the closure that's been captured in object one here with these arguments. So that is the first step. You know, we're now returning this lambda function and last week we created immutable objects once we set their properties we couldn't change them and it turns out that's what the setter and val here are for it's very trivial to add that behavior in so we're going to say setter um, which tells us if we're going to pass in a value um, and we're going to pass in uh, an actual value for that well, it could be simpler, I suppose. But let's keep it this way. Uh, we'll we'll look at simplifying at the end, just as a as a wee treat there, because yeah, this is so um, so much like having a treat, you know. Um, so we pass in a flag here. This is either going to be nil or t. It tells us we want to set a value, and the val will be indeed the the value that gets passed in. So the first thing we do is we say when setter, so when this is set to true, we then want to set f the get f of the props of prop to val. And that was just a bunch of words that was completely meaningless. And I know that because I heard myself say it. But let's explore what I meant by that. If you've not watched any of the, the videos previously, if you want to get a value stored in a list here, we can use getf to get from the list the value, and this returns a pointer of sorts. So when we set f, we're setting f on um, a pointer, and we're saying that value, and this figures it all out for us. And it's the same here with getf. Now that we have set that, getf will get the value, but this when, it's like a, a single branch if statement. So when we're setting something, you set f. Otherwise, well, in fact, there is no otherwise. Irrespective of whether the when runs or not, we're then going to say get f. So both getting and setting will return a value from this function. Uh, and to prove that, we can now say uh, name. And when we run this now, uh, I need to recompile it, of course. There we go, it recompiled with no errors this time. So when we run this, we just get uh, my name popping back in. Uh, so we're gonna say get name. I'm gonna use the colon there just so that it's abundantly clear that that's what we're referencing. So we're getting name and that. Now, I did say that we can change the value. So let's say let new name is going to be apply obj one name Gary. say new name and we're going to say obj name so we can say new name here and we're going to apply uh, object one to name so these should be exactly the same thing but we're just capturing name name new name gosh I'm going mad uh, Oh, yeah, I needed to say this. So we will retry that. It's probably not going to work because that's not a function we've recompiled. But nevertheless, now that I've changed that, so we can see that get new name is Gary and the, obj the, the, the property coming out of the object is also Gary. So we can see by overriding or changing a value we get that value straight back here and it's stored and we can see that 
my assertions are true. We, I'm proving that this build function does everything that I'm claiming it does. So irrespective of getting or setting a value, we get the value back. And if we're setting it, we get the new changed value. And that's, that's all that's going on here. And this is basically all you need for building objects. These five lines of code, that is incredible. And the magic is with lambdas. And you know, this, this is just an if statement, so there's nothing crazy here. And this is just like looking something out up out of a, an object. We're cheating a little bit here using the property lists that Lisp gives us, um, but we could easily have written a function that takes a list and make sure that it's got an even number of elements in it and then divides them up into pairs and, and building our own kind of property list thing just using functions. But just to illustrate the principle here, I'm using uh, property lists just for ease sake, but they're not, they are lists, they're not object, they're not dictionaries or anything like that, even though they, they behave like them, I guess, to an extent. Um, but they, they, they legitimately are not um, objects in the conventional sense. Oh, excuse me, uh, hay fever is playing up today. Again, because it's summer. Anyway, um, the other thing that we w might want to look at in an object system is inheritance. So all we're going to do here is we're going to return, um, what do we want to do? We want to append uh, this. So we're going to say base. Uh, oh, I need to use that funky backtick syntax uh, base to uh, props. So we're just going to leave that here and we're going to say let um, obj1 is going to be build. So I'm going to say name and Monroe. I'm going to give it age. That was one parenthesis too many. So say obj2 extend obj1. I'm going to give this name uh, Gary. And we are going to leave that there, actually. That's everything we want. So all we're going to do is um, format nil. And we're going to say this. I'm going to say obj2. Um, oh, yeah, I need to use a let star. That's all. So we will abort that. And I'll just uh, realign that. So if we run this now, um, extend is undefined. Uh, let me define it then. So if I evaluate that now and retry. So here we are, we've got our uh, property list here. We've got this new thing called a base, which has got the closure. And it's got name, which is Gary. So this append is doing exactly what we wanted to do. We need to append the parent object that we're extending from into the property list uh, that we've got here. So with that being the case, we can say let, and we're going to override props, and we're going to steal this line here, put that up there, just count my parentheses, there we go, and we are going to return props. And I'm going to reevaluate that. There we go. Great. So, as before, as with the build function, uh, we're going to say prop optional setter nil val nil. And this, and I've spelled optional wrong. Optional. There we go. That's what we want. And so we can do exactly the same thing we were going to do in the, or what we do in the build here. So we're going to say when setter, say setf getf props prop val. And so our extended object now has the ability to set properties. The only other thing that we need to do here is unlike the build object, 
we need to be able to look up our inheritance chain and see if this object doesn't have the property does its parent. And so we can do that by saying let local and local is going to mean um, is the property local to this object or not and we're going to say get f props prop um, then we say if local then we return local so basically get the property or try to get the property and if it doesn't exist it will return nil so we get an object or nil in this this local variable here so we're saying if that is something that is not nil then we want to return that otherwise what we want to do is we want to apply to base because base is a function um, because it's that lambda and we want to say um, we want to look up prop and again just counting my parentheses there so we're going to do that so now we've got this um, this test code here uh, and this is just going to return a closure so this is now no longer an, an object we can deal with we're going to have to do stuff with it so what we can say is apply to object to name so all we should be doing is uh, prop is unbound um, why is it saying that because that needs to be prop not props that's right so let's retry that there we go all right yeah that's right so we've got Gary here, and just to prove it, let's make that Bob, just so that you know that I'm not faking this. There we go, we've got Bob. So the object two extends object one, and it overrides the name. So let's see the inheritance in action. So we get the name, we're gonna say apply to object two, the list, that has age and we can see that uh, the object to the Bob object the Bob object yes I just said that it uses the the lookup here to find its local name but because it doesn't have a local age it looks up using apply to the base and uh, just looks up the chain. Now um, there's something else we can do. Uh, and I'm just gonna you know put these onto separate lines because it's starting to get a little bit unwieldy. Uh, there we go. So we can say apply to object Two, uh, and I have to think about this a little bit. So apply to the apply of object two, the list of base, the list of name. There we go. So if we run this now, you can see here that because we can directly address the base object because we've we've bound it here, um, you know. we can directly get at that and then we can get at the properties of that base object and so on and so on just like a, a prototype chain just like in JavaScript uh, it's nothing nothing unusual I'm not reinventing the wheel here probably doing it in a very strange way you know my wheel might be rather angular but you know it, it's moving and it's, it's doing what it should be doing so we've got the ability to, to look up the chain now I'm going to write two extra methods just to make the rest of our testing code just that little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to say defun get property. I'm going to say object 
prop and this returns the application of object to the list of uh, prop make sure that's back ticked and we're going to do the same but for set uh, and as well as a prop it takes a val and so that becomes uh, t val so let's make sure they're both compiled in place now let's get into some interesting stuff here so we've seen how we can you know extend objects i'm just going to copy this Now, um, get rid of the object to age and uh, get property uh, object to base. So this becomes get property and this becomes name. So we no longer have to do the direct application that's being handled for somewhere else and we can just use these convenience methods. So when I run this now, um, objects unbound, uh, that should be of course object two. So we will abort that and try again. Yep, so this does exactly as it did before. We're just using these convenience methods now. But let's get into some more interesting stuff. So I'm going to attach uh, can. Uh, so I go axe throwing occasionally when, you know, we're not having a global pandemic from time to time. Um, so we're going to say can throw axes. Now, you have to be over 18 to throw axes for very obvious reasons because it's not it's just not for children it just isn't so we're going to say um, get property this age I'm going to say 18 uh, and now what we're doing here uh, I'm going to close the interpreter for the moment just so we can see what's going on we are binding a a lambda function to this can throw axes keyword argument. So let's um, can uh, throw axes. We can get rid of that. Uh, we can get rid of that. So we want to get property. Um, uh, yes, we want to get property object to. We want to say can throw axes. But what we have to do is apply this. And we're going to pass in the list of object two and I'm just checking my parentheses so that looks okay so if I evaluate this now can Bob throw axes well he can um, looking at this so let's change his age to 17 and if we evaluate this again it says Bob can throw axes can Bob throw axes nil so Bob can't throw axes now because he's not old enough and so we now have these objects that have properties and you can attach methods to them uh, and we can call these methods. It'd be great if we could write uh, another convenience function but I'm not going to bother doing that right now. But this this really is the long and short of it all so let's, uh, let's get rid of this and that and only keep what we've got there and uh, let's say obj1 um, 
Oh, I, I meant to, um, let's see, Bob, uh, age is 17. And let's see. go so get property obj one name I'm gonna say apply get property obj one can throw axes obj one and if we evaluate this now can Bob throw axes nil? Also, can I throw axes? It's true because I'm older. I'm old enough. You'd hope so. Um, so there, we we've got this um, can throw axes method, which we actually defined on object one. Which uh, I'll confess, I I hadn't noticed that. I wasn't necessarily paying attention. I thought I'd attached that to object two, but because the inheritance all worked exactly the way it was supposed to, I I didn't notice. Um, and so uh, when I called it an object two, it just looked up and got the value on object one. So I, I can't imagine proof better than that where I, I made a mistake as a programmer and attached something on a parent class and then the subclass just automatically worked the way it should do. Um, so that was both a bit humbling and rather good that the quite literally the math works out here so even when I'm uh, not paying attention and put things in the in the right place by accident it all just works so that's that's cool this is kind of what I've been up to for the, for the last week and uh, genuinely to see it all in in this this is all there is to it these are just convenience methods um, but let's see if we can make it just that little bit nicer. So defun, um, let's say call. Now I want to check something. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm not overriding a function that already exists. So let's just type call and see what happens. Uh, it's unbound. Um, that is excellent. So I can use call. So I'm going to say call um, obj. Um, F uh, and say rest args and so we can say apply um, get property um, obj F and we're gonna say args Okay, here goes nothing. This could go all horribly wrong, so we're gonna say call um, obj1 can throw axes. Um, is this what I wanna do? Um, yes, this is, because I wanna say append. Um, and we're gonna say obj to args there we go so call the object the function and any arguments of which there are none so let's compile that that worked so let's define another function that takes extra parameters. Um, okay, so we're there. Um, let's just say we're gonna add two things together because um, I'm not very creative at this time of night. Lambda, this, um, I'm going to say A and B, and it simply returns the, um, uh, no, it's not going to take a uh, num, 
I'm going to say uh, I'm going to add get property this age and num so that looks okay and we're gonna say um, add uh, and after this so we're gonna say call obj1 add and we're going to pass in uh, 5, so this should be 2350. Yes, there we go. So we have a way here of um, calling this thing. So it's just, again, this is just syntactic sugar. There's, there's nothing more to it than that. It's, it's just convenient stuff over this application and abstracting the details away. And that's all object orientation is. It's just abstraction less and syntactic sugar. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, and let's get to the beginning of the line there. Uh, and so let's just say this is, you know, test code. So there's no misunderstanding. And this is it. Two two functions that do the heavy lifting of everything and three for getting properties, setting properties and um, calling um, methods. So let's call method. Uh, just so that we're super explicitly clear, uh, I'm going to actually, sorry, I'm going to decompile that and call it method uh, and evaluate that. Um, which apparently I can't do because apparently call method is um, it does exist in Common Lisp, so never mind about that. Nevertheless, you know that that's it. That's all there is to it. I hope I, I hope I haven't confused anyone. I hope that this is somewhat clear as we've gone through it. We've just tested it and proven how things work. Um, I've taken the idea of um, this, although I could self, if you uh, are of the Python persuasion. Because in uh, Python, their classes are passed self as the first parameter. Uh, and so that's entirely reasonable here. Um, and you don't see it here. We're just calling uh, a function on an object with some stuff there. So we are not explicitly passing a reference to the object in into the function, but the call function, the implementation detail does that for us. It appends the object to the argument list and passes it on through. Uh, I, when I was writing this, this really demystified a lot of uh, what classes and how some languages work with object orientation and it, it blew my mind. I, I, when I'd finished thinking about all this, I wasn't sure if I should be impressed or terrified um, because it, like, I'm, I'm gonna say it, like that imposter syndrome kicks in, I'm looking at this going, um, like, is this stuff really obvious? And it's just taking me a really long time to figure it out or is this stuff, I, like, I don't know. Um, and that don't know can be somewhat making me a bit anxious but you know that is what it is and you know we're all programmers we all deal with these anxieties but hey you know i had a lot of fun working on it i hope the videos have been enlightening and interesting next week i swear i'm going to try and get round to that packaging video so we can look at common lisps uh packages uh how they work how to start a project using a cl project for example how to work with some of the tests and generally uh, a little bit of ADSF, ASDF, sorry, AD, a, yeah, ASDF, uh, and how to load systems, test systems, things like that. So thanks for watching. Um, if you liked it, please give me a like, um, share, whatever you want to do. Um, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care. Have a good weekend, and I'll I'll see you next week.